Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Achara the Kirk. Hello. We've got a pitch meeting here from Screen Rant called Tenet. It's a little movie that you might have heard of. I love pitch meetings. I love Ryan George. We have an interview with him. If you haven't seen it yet, just look for the. It'll, there's a link in the description, I'm sure, because Achara doesn't forget anything these days. Because Achara on top of it does her job well. Yeah. Not. So I reviewed this with Achara, much to the consternation of some fans, because man, the votes are very uh, divisive. 617 up, 272 down uh, out of 10,000 views approximately, give or take. The title of our review, if you want to look it up, is called I Don't Like Tenet. And so that's where we're starting from. Uh, you know, I've let it sit for a bit and I've listened to the comments from people and I can understand where people are coming from and just conceptually I think it's a neat film, a neat yeah. project. Uh, I have not been inspired to go back and watch it again right away, but I am going to go back and watch it again. Maybe I'll do a second review, given that the view count is so low that I don't know if it's worthwhile, but I, for at least for myself, I'll probably go watch it again just to see if I feel any differently about it like I did with Dunkirk, which my initial viewing I wasn't too hot on, then I watched it again and I loved it. So maybe I'll come away liking Tenet more the second time around, but I did express a lot of issues in my 18 and a half minute review with Achara. I'm so. curious to see if Ryan George picks up on any of the same stuff that we had quite with yeah. or if he has completely different ones. Because he's making jokes, he gets away with, you, you know, yeah. a lot more upvotes. Let's see, here we go. <laughs> so you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's called Tenet. Okay. So we're gonna follow this guy, right? The protagonist. And what's his name? I just told you. Oh. And he's gonna be part of this operation at an opera house, right? And there's some weird stuff going on. Like he's saved by what seems to be a backwards bullet. Oh, interesting. And then he gets tortured by some bad guys and takes a little pill to kill himself. Oh, okay. I mean, very short movie, but still pretty <laughs> enjoyable. No, that's, we're, we're still gonna keep going. Oh, even better. Yeah, so it turns out being willing to take that pill was a test and he's being recruited into this organization called Tenet. That's the name of the movie. It is. And so he's going to talk to this guy for a little bit. Sure, sure. And then he's going to go talk to the scientist lady for a little bit. And what's mm -hmm. she going to tell him? Well, she's going to tell him about this thing called inversion, right? Okay. And when things are inverted, they move backwards through time instead of forwards because they have reverse entropy. Oh, uh, scientific sounding things that I don't fully grasp are tight. <laughs> so like the protagonist can catch an inverted bullet that's lodged into something using Using his gun, right? Stuff like that. Oh, wow, yeah, sounds cool. Just how? No. No, oh, yeah, okay. And he can also, like, catch an inverted bullet with his hand off a table, but as the scientist explains, he has to have dropped it. Like, if you watch the tape, he's always the cause of it moving, whether forwards or backwards, you know? Right. Right, yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you get it? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just I'm just kind of wrapping my head around it, but okay. Well, we're gonna have that scientist lady literally say, don't try to understand it, yeah. just feel it. So you can go that route if you want. Okay, That's I mean, what I, I would did. like to understand though, so I could kind of follow what's going on. Exactly. But... Yeah, no, no, okay, I'll, I'll get there. Anyway, so she reveals that these inverted objects keep getting sent back from the future, right? Okay. And she thinks that maybe these are like remnants of a future war and that the world might end, but like in the past. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so why did you continue that sentence in a completely different place? Oh, well, sometimes we're going to do that thing where a single conversation kind of spans over different locations just to keep things dynamic on screen, you know? Right, okay, I mean, that does look <laughs> good, but that means that the characters talk and then kind of pause their conversation, change locations, and then keep talking. It just keeps exposition scenes a little more fun to watch, you know? So then... <laughs> what are you doing? I'm calling an Uber back to the office so I can finish that thought. All right. All right, he'll be here in seven minutes. Wow, seven minutes, okay. Huh? So then the protagonist has to go talk to this other guy, Neil. Oh, he's gonna go talk to somebody else now. Okay, yeah. after that, he's gotta go talk to this other guy. Okay, a lot of going from person to person and talking so far. Yeah, but here's the thing. This time, it turns out it wasn't actually a guy he was supposed to go see. Turns out it was this lady. Oh, uh, okay, well, yeah, no, that is a pretty good twist, I guess. Right, okay, so he's finally with the lady he needs to be talking to. He is, yeah, and she's an arms dealer. Amazing, okay, so what does he find out from her? Oh, you're gonna like this. He finds out he's gonna have to go talk to another guy. Oh, okay. and this guy, he tells him all <laughs> All about having to go talk to another guy. Oh my god. But to get to that guy, he's gonna have to talk to this lady first. What is going on? Oh, don't worry. Now this lady's one of the main characters. So we're we're on track now. Okay, thank God. So who is this lady? Well, her name is Kat, and she's married to this Russian oligarch named Sador, and she freaking hates this guy. Oh, how come? He's actually controlling her because she sold him a counterfeit painting. So now he's like, well, you can't see our son. Very rude. Yeah, extremely. <laughs> okay, so now I know a little bit about this cat lady. Tell me more about this protagonist guy. What's his backstory? 
story. Tell me about him. Yeah. Well, what's what's his, what's his character arc? Past. Okay. What's his like? What's his emotional stake in the story? Well, he doesn't want the world to end, right? Understandable. But what like emotionally? Well, he lives in the world, so you know he doesn't want it to end. Okay. He also seems really <laughs> invested in this cat lady. Like he really wants to protect her. Seems to have some kind of bond with her. Oh, okay. Well, tell me more about yeah. that. Yeah. No. Ah. Look, it's just that I really want the movie concept and the action scenes to have a ton of breathing room. So we're not really going to spend time on stuff like like characters and stuff. Okay. I mean, it's going to be a little tough for me to care about the story if you don't give me anything in that department, though. But it's going to look very cool. Oh, it's going to be very cool. Okay, I didn't realize. Okay, never mind character then. Okay, so now <laughs> Cat to bring the protagonist to her evil husband. He's got to destroy this painting. Okay, okay. And so what's the plan? Well, this thing's in this super protected vault, right? So the plan is... Hold on, let me set the mood here. <laughs> Oh my god. So frustrating. Yes. Can you lower that, please? Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. That was that was very loud music. Yeah, it's very good music, though. Right, okay, but yeah. I didn't hear what you were saying. It's not going to be like that in the movie, is it? It is, yeah, because it's very good music, you know? It's going to build up the tension. I can't hear the talking, but it's good music, though. So then the protagonist is going to have this fight scene where he's, like, fighting this guy who's moving in reverse. It's going to be nuts. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that does sound cool. And then we're going to finally meet this Russian oligarch and kind of figure out what his evil plan is. Okay, and so what is his plan? Well, so in the future, this scientist develop this algorithm that could kind of invert the world, right? Because they're all mad in the future about global warming, like we destroyed the planet. Okay. And she split up this algorithm into nine pieces and hid them in the past, because they would pretty much end the past, and so maybe the future too. And so the bad guy is putting this algorithm together? Exactly. And he's actually dying, so he's kind of like, well, might as well take out the whole world with me as I go out. So he has kind of the same motivation as a kid flipping a Monopoly board because he's losing. Pretty much, yeah. So we're going to have this amazing car chase scene where some of the cars are moving back Backwards in time, it's gonna be nuts. Wow, 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 wow. And then that cat lady's gonna get inverse shot by her husband, and so the protagonist, he's gonna risk the whole world to save her. A little risky, but okay. So they're gonna <laughs> invert themselves and start moving backwards through time. And so, and so, how does that work? Oh, there's some very cool stuff going on. For example, like oxygen flow goes the other way in this direction, so they need their own oxygen. Basically, everything's backwards. Like explosions make things cold. And so, does that mean that like light receptors in people's eyes start emitting light? What? Do people have flashlights? <laughs> I know. I mean, please don't think about this too much. How do inverted people poop? Does it go up? Okay, so they're going to travel back in time, and we're going to find out that the protagonist was actually fighting himself, but in reverse. Oh, very mind bending. Yeah, so they need to stop the bad guy from the whole world. So they team up with these time traveling army guys that just kind of come out of nowhere. Oh. And they go on this freaking mission where one team is moving forwards through time, shooting at people, and then another team waits a while and then moves backwards through time through the same fight. And so, like, who are they shooting exactly. at? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, no. So we're not really going to see you go shooting at We're just kind of shooting in the screen. I guess it's like something. What? So protagonist and army guy. Yeah, see, I gotta watch the movie again with subtitles. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on. And there's like a dead body when they get there. But then the thing suddenly pops up and takes a bullet to save the protagonist. It's gonna be crazy. Please turn that down. Okay, let me turn that off. So anyway, it turns out that Neil actually sacrifices himself to save the protagonist. Okay, so now I think that was entertaining, but also... What just happened? Well, Neil's gonna explain that Tenet is actually founded by the protagonist and that he has a future in the past. Okay. So Neil waited with one of the teams until after the battle and then moved through it like in an inverted way backwards in time, but then he saw that the protagonist was in trouble, so he re-inverted himself and then saved him with a Humvee. Right. But then after that, he has a little talk with the protagonist and then he has to go re-invert himself to go take that bullet to save the protagonist's life. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. And so the protagonist is going to keep moving forward through time, but then because inversion is the thing, he's actually the one who founded Tenet at a certain point in time. We're not sure when, and he's the one who recruited Neil. Sure, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> you understand? You get it? I, uh, it's a little complicated. Oh I feel like maybe it'll be hard for the general audience to kind of grasp what's going on. Actually, it's going to be barely an inconvenience. Super easy. Oh, really? Yeah, it's going to be so confusing and hard to hear that people are going to want to go watch it a couple times. Is that going to work? It might. It is. It seems a little risky. Well, I mean, you gotta take a risk sometimes, right? It's not like the future of cinema depends on how this one movie performs. I guess not. Oh. Wow. Did that, you... that perfectly summarized all of my feelings. Yeah. 
Pretty much. Perfectly summarized every grievance I had with the movie, except for the fight scene. That was the one gripe he didn't like, because everyone else thinks it's cool. I mean, yeah, everyone else sort of but, but I mean, there were, were cool aspects about it. Conceptually. But like, the, man alive, that movie frustrated me. And he perfectly captured every single bit with the sound, with the plot, with the science. But then like he questioned the science and I was like, oh my God, this is so me. He's, I, he took it even further. He's like, how do inverted people poop? Does it go back up? <laughs> That's a question that like a kid would ask. Yeah. Like I, it, it didn't even occur to me to like take it that far. Everything is moving backwards. So it's like, well, why not go that direction? Oh, I was getting so frustrated when he was saying some of the stuff like about the characters and stuff. I'm like, yes, like, ah, I need something. You can't just have a cool idea and be like, Here's my cool concept. I mean, yes, sometimes that's why you watch a movie, but you also need to have an emotional investment. You're asking me to like spend two hours of my time. A long time ago, a buddy of mine had told me about like real science fiction that is more conceptual than it is a story where it's literally just kind of exploring concepts in a novel. You're not really following a plot or character development. You're just following these sort of big grand ideas. And I feel like that's what Tenet sort of is, yeah. but it doesn't follow that all all the way through because there are things that just don't add up. Like he was pointing out, the way it was hurting uh, the studio, yeah. the exec, like the way it was hurting him is how I felt watching the movie. The guy pitching, the, the pitcher was like, no, no, you don't just don't think about it. He's like, yeah, I, no, but I want to understand this in order to move forward with the story because not being able to grasp these concepts frustrates me and to the point that it debilitates my ability to enjoy anything. Well, that was literally you and I watching it. Cause you were like turning to me and going, Cha, can you explain to me what, what he said? Like, what, just I couldn't just go let it, it wash over no, you. It doesn't even matter. It was, just follow the I, story. This isn't, it, you know, like for whatever reason, when I watched something like The Matrix, that was easy to digest. And, that was clear. Know, that was, yeah, it was very clear. Even suppose. Inception. Inception, yeah. It was just taking it a little too far for my taste. And I consider myself on the sophisticated side of the spectrum when it comes to your, your audience. There's people who don't want to, they just want popcorn. You know, right. they want to just check their brain at the door and not think about it at all. And I do have my days where I like those kinds of movies. I'm a big fan of Fast and Furious, but like I am very much into the cerebral things. This was just like, too much even for me. When people in the comments of my review go, you know, not every movie has to have character development or characters you like, I'm like, what? Then what's the point? What is a movie without that? <laughs> I'm trying to, open myself up and go, well, there is something positive that people are experiencing with this. I want to find that for myself. Right. And so I, that's why I'm gonna go back and watch it again with subtitles so I can get through everything. with Because oh. the sound, it's very much a Nolan thing. Like he just, it was almost like a spoof of Nolan. Does he not like ADR or something? He hates ADR. Oh. Absolutely hates ADR. I don't know how much he did it on this film, but he's very much about on location sound. And so if he can't get, but I mean, he ADR'd uh, Bane for Dark Knight Rises, if I'm not mistaken. Probably couldn't hear it is, anything. It was incoherent. Yeah. Like people could not make out anything he was saying. So they went back and I, I believe they redubbed his, even then it was still like, huh? But the most egregious one was in Interstellar when Michael Caine was dying. And everyone in the theater was like, what? Huh? As the music goes into the crescendo while he's telling the truth. Yeah, I, don't I mean, know. it's it is a, true about the music though. It was really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> you still need to hear what the heck people are saying. Otherwise, why have dialogue? I would have rather he just cuts out the dialogue altogether. It's for me, and I think a lot of people, if you have both running at the same time, these audio tracks are competing for your ears. Whereas if you just have one and isolate it, you're not thinking about that now. You're just involved in the film. You go, okay, I don't hear what's happening. You just have to rely on it visually to understand what's going on. Yeah. And I think the big issue with Tenet is, ironically, you know, considering it's Nolan, it wasn't visual enough to follow those broad concepts for me. I feel like it needed to be more, because they're saying a lot of important chunks of information in that dialogue that was just, completely muddied because of the music and maybe lack of ADR. And so I would have rather, okay, if you're not gonna let me hear it, then just cut out the audio altogether, is my, in a nutshell. It's absolutely right what he was saying about how it just kind of felt like this dot to dot like thing where he's like, oh, now we go here and we talk to this person and we talk to this person. We're constantly changing countries and scenery so that 
it's like visually the background's interesting, but it's all just information, 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 rather yeah. than like action and showing. There's a Star Wars reference in here somewhere. It's either very Rise of Skywalker or very prequel Star Wars. It, it could go either one. Rise of Skywalker was just like this constant chase everywhere. Gotta go here to go to there, yeah. gotta go to there. And then there's the prequel series, which is like people are just walking and talking and that's it. It's just a lot of exposition. So it's a little bit of both, I guess. Anyway, dumb reference, I'm sorry. Anywho, um, some of the visuals were cool. Thank you, Screen Rant, for making this video, or uh, Ryan George. It's just a fantastic summary of all yeah. of my frustrations with Tenet. Uh, you guys, let us know your feelings in the comments below, positive and negative, both about the film and the pitch meeting. And if you haven't already, subscribed to Screen Rant to see more of their pitch meetings in Ryan George's personal YouTube channel where he has a lot of commentary on just all the weird things about life. Things. Yeah. Yes. And it's it's very, very entertaining. Some of my favorite YouTube content comes from Ryan George's YouTube channel. Definitely check it out. I'm Jabby Koei. This is... Achara Kirk. Peace out.